Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crude crowdfunded space rocket Spica. Today is February 2nd and it is time to roll some rocket updates. So today we took a couple of flat stainless steel plates and rolled them into what will become Spica's propellant tanks. We have already plasma cut and processed most of the other parts needed to build these tanks if you've been following our previous episodes. The next step will be putting these cylinders under our long seam welder to join the two ends together. That's why we were doing hopefully some of the last tweaks to our long seam welding process. First off, Daniel polished a new welding torch bracket that Jakob cut out earlier that then got attached to the linear guide rail so we could get moving. And just look at the improvement on the welds from our last video, we're definitely getting close now. But that doesn't leave us without having to do some manual welding as well. The first example here is Daniel again, who helped Martin in welding the footrest for the astronaut seat prototype this weekend. Martin cut and formed the piece earlier, but was happy to get some help in welding aluminum from Daniel. And secondly, Jorgen here, who after tack welding the intertank section shell last week, continued working on it today by making full welds around the shell laying nearly 7 meters of some nice and shiny beads. This means we are getting close to having the entire intertank section ready to connect the two propellant tanks. And one of the things we haven't tried doing in house for the propellant tanks yet is cutting holes for the piping in their bulkheads on our plasma cutters. So after last week's successful sloping surface cutting test we were eager to give it a try. This is about to happen. Uh, we're gonna try and cut a 40 millimeter hole in it, uh, but I'm a bit worried that it's gonna uh the air pressure on the inside is actually going to make the end cap lift off from the uh, from the bottom of the tray. And how did we find where the highest point of the bulkhead is? I will use the auto zeroing feature on the plasma cutter. Fortunately, uh, the tray at the bottom is a little bit slanted, so um, we know that the end cap is a little bit misaligned. And now we're just going to cut the hole so that the air can get out. And then we're going to pull it out of the uh, out of the tray and then do some manual measurements from maybe six positions up to the nearest uh, edge of the 40 millimeter hole. And that's going to give us a number for how how offset that center hole is. And then we'll cut a new one. The big one needs to be 104 millimeters in diameter, so we got plenty of uh, room to work with. I will be ready with the emergency stop. If anyone screams stop, then I'll push it. Ready? Yeah. This turned out perfect, or at least until the point we realized the cutting file was set up to cut the holes outside the circle lines, meaning we ended up with slightly larger holes than we'd like. But oh well, someone will have to practice their welding skills. That is all for now, so as always, thank you for supporting and watching. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit all-volunteer project. 
The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website, www.compsub.com, and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.